Real drama took place today in a California court. That's where Thereno's founder, Elizabeth Holmes, was sentenced to over 11 years. Joining me now, white-collar criminal defense attorney extraordinaire Sarah Azari and Tyler Schultz. He was the Thereno's whistleblower. It's great to have you both talk the law. And the big thing to start with, though, Tyler, is your sense of knowing what you know and knowing her and her role in it do you believe today justice was served? Yeah, I do think that justice was served. Um, during the trial, the judge said that the sentencing guidelines would put her between 11 and 14 years, and she was given 11 years, so I think that was, that was a fair sentence. And there are a lot of external factors at play as well. You know, she's pregnant, she has a young child at home, she's very famous. So I'm happy to see that none of those external factors seem to really play a role in the sentencing. Why are you happy to see that it didn't play a role? What do you want this audience to understand about why they shouldn't have sympathy for her because of the things you just said? Well, I mean, she chose to, you know, have these children when she knew that, um, you know, significant prison time was on the table. So I don't think that should be a reason to decrease her prison time. Based on what she did, what do you want people to understand about why she deserves that kind of prison time? Yeah, I mean, so this was a massive fraud. Um, this was not just a startup that failed. This was a startup that systematically defrauded investors of hundreds of millions of dollars and put patients' lives at risk. This was um, um, something needed to be done and, and, you know, justice was slow, but I feel like we finally got it today. You know, Sarah, uh, you had a very interesting insight in the notes you sent me, uh, which went right to the basis of, you know this judge, you know this forum, and because I want you to explain to the audience that this judge didn't just jump in for sentencing and why you believe the judge's understanding of the case, I think their name is Davila or Davila. Davila. Um, take people through why, you, why Davila um, was the right person to sentence this and what you think of the uh, term. Yeah, Chris, good to be with you. You know, Davila was the presiding judge over this trial, and he was the sentencer, so he had intimate familiarity with, with the evidence that unfolded in this trial. And I can tell you that he was not happy because, as Tyler said, this was a double scheme. There was a scheme against the patients. There was a scheme duping the uh, investors. And then the position of the defense of Holmes in, in her sentencing papers was really disingenuous. I mean, more so, like you said, Fugazi. You know, there was, a, there was an argument about uh, there was no loss and there was no gain. So as you know, Chris, in a white-collar fraud case, um, it really, it's, it's all about the loss amount, right? And that's what determines the sentence. And so the argument of Holmes was these are really uh, sophisticated um, in, investors in Silicon Valley, um, and so they took a risk, and, and, and there was no loss to them. Um, and the company was doing really well after the Wall Street Journal uncovered everything so that you know there was really no loss um, and and therefore the guidelines don't apply and therefore she should get home confinement which was just the most ridiculous argument to make and then they also said there was no gain to her because she wasn't really lining her pockets like a Bernie Madoff in a Ponzi scheme and and that was also disingenuous because she owned you know millions of dollars worth of stocks in Theranos so they lost credibility there and I think Chris this this sent a really loud and clear message just overall that white collar crime is real crime and there's real punishment for it and in silicon valley specifically it sent the message that even though we as a society um, look to innovation we encourage innovation we're not going to allow innovation to shield shade where there's shade there's accountability and and she's going to be one of many people that we're going to see face this type of a sentence I think you know that the the FT, FTX uh, cryptocurrency platform is under investigation now the founder of um, uh, Nicola I think the electric uh, vehicle startup uh, he was just recently indicted so so I think there's been a lot going on in this Silicon Valley startup world that has sort of not been really um, looked into as deeply, and, and it will. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And 
Don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.